All right, everyone, we got four big stories set for you guys today, one of them dealing with Nintendo's future, in particular, what might be happening with Nintendo Switch 2 and some other stuff surrounding the story of Switch 2. We have some updates on the PlayStation 5 Pro as well, a popular game that's really gaining a lot of attention over on Steam as well, and more. We got four big stories, so without further ado, let's dive right in because I'm sure you've seen some headlines by now, and if you haven't, well, Hey, here's that news. We're talking about Nintendo not attending Gamescom this year, even though they did attend last year and before COVID were attending all the prior years from 2019 on backwards. Now, when we look at the release slate for Nintendo, we do know that upcoming in May, we have Endless Ocean Luminous along with the Thousand Year Door. And then at the end of June, we obviously have Luigi's Mansion 2. Now we've been waiting patiently for our Nintendo Direct or I guess impatiently is probably the correct way to say that. And unfortunately, it hasn't arrived at least a general one to give us an idea of what Nintendo is doing in the second half. Now, the Gamescom event that Nintendo typically attends is where they end up demoing and marketing a lot of their future games. Now, last year, they were doing that for their holiday slate of games, along with a little bit of behind the scenes stuff with Switch 2 with certain developers. But that's all fine and dandy. So we fully suspected that they would be at Gamescom again this year because, again, Nintendo always attends so they could market their holiday games besides the COVID years. Well, here's the thing when talking about Nintendo this time around. They're not attending Gamescom. Nintendo UK and Nintendo Germany both gave us reasons and quotes that we're going to go over, so this is an official thing. But I do think that this all plays into Nintendo's current plans with Nintendo Switch and Nintendo Switch 2. So first let's dive into what Nintendo UK had to say. Gamescom is a great event and each year we evaluate whether Nintendo should participate or not. And this was said by a Nintendo UK spokesperson to Eurogamer. After careful consideration from all perspectives, we've made the decision to not be present at Gamescom 2024. Players will have opportunities to try out Nintendo Switch games at other events throughout the year. Now, again, I did also mention that Nintendo Germany responded Nintendo of Germany because, hey, they are literally the host country of Gamescom. Here's what they had to say. Gamescom is a central event in Nintendo's event calendar. A Nintendo of Europe spokesperson told German website Games Wirtschaft. This year, however, after careful consideration, we decided against taking part in Cologne. Instead, players can try out the games for Nintendo Switch as part of other Germany-wide events. Now, that's all fascinating, but what does this have to do with Nintendo and their future? Well, I think the general takeaway is that, one, there's not going to be a lot of major games coming out in the second half of this year. I'm not saying Nintendo won't have anything. They'll have some ports, they'll have some remasters, maybe we get a Wind Waker or Twilight Princess or... Metroid Prime 1 and 2, or uh, sorry, 2 and 3, I suppose. And who knows what else? There, there, there's going to be something. There could also be smaller games. I think what this confirms is Nintendo's first half of this year is going to be mimicked in their second half. And honestly, this might have been the expectation the moment we saw that Pokemon Legends ZA was actually being promoted as a 2025 game when people thought that would actually be a holiday game this year. With that being a 2025 game, it really left the slate kind of bare for the second half of this year. Now, we know Metroid Prime 4 has obviously been announced, but I do feel like if Metroid Prime 4 was coming this year, they would have wanted to market it at this event. we got to remember, to go to Gamescom costs Nintendo millions of dollars, and so to make it worthwhile, they have to have major games to market that are going to make them, well, millions of dollars. And if they don't have those major games, then Nintendo may not want to actually participate. And when you read some of the exact words here where, where... they said, you know, the, the, the European slash German spokesperson saying, they're saying, hey, after cons- careful consideration, we decided not to be part of it. Then the UK spokesperson saying careful consideration from all perspectives. It really looks like Nintendo kind of looked at their entire slate of what's coming and just decided, you know what? Gamescom doesn't make financial sense for us this year, which tells me they don't have big games to promote and want to put at this event. Remember, Gamescom is sort of like an E3 just for Europe. So I find this to be quite fascinating that Nintendo is dipping out and not participating. Now, that being said, what's going to happen? Because Nintendo is not going to want to leave their investors high and dry by having practically nothing coming. They already feel a little bit high and dry right now. No major games to promote. This sounds like it's going to be kind of the worst year of Switch overall. Well... 
Here's the thing, that probably will be true, but I think Nintendo has a plan, and I think the plan is going to become clear this summer, because I do fully believe Nintendo will be unveiling Nintendo Switch 2 this summer, and the moment they unveil it, everything about Nintendo shifts to that next platform, and we will see games, we will see exciting stuff, but it's all going to be for things happening in early 2025 or later, aka I do think the system will be releasing in March of 2025 and being heavily promoted this year. Now you might go, well, damn, isn't that going to kill their holiday sales? And yes, but if they don't have major games coming, their holiday sales were already going to be pretty bad anyways. That being said, I don't think that's the end of Nintendo Switch's holiday sales. I do think Nintendo's got a number of things they can do. Obviously, lower the price of the system, create a lot more bundles that they haven't done before. Hell, we've never had a Zelda game bundle then as an example. Maybe release some more special edition systems, you know, like a, a, a themed Zelda OLED or some sort of, you know, I'm on that Zelda kick, but it could be whatever. They could theme whatever they want to try to move more units. Also, I think it might be the ideal time to maybe drop an N64 Classic this upcoming holiday season, and that could really help them boost their holiday revenue as well, and that would make investors happy as they prepare to launch a new system with an event this summer, and then they do a direct in, you know, in, in September that does market a bunch of stuff, uh, you know, a bunch of their ports and remasters and all that for this holiday season, but then also market some of the games coming to Switch 2, and then they have a big blowout event in January, along with a Nintendo Live event in January, where fans get a chance to go hands-on with Switch 2 games, both in Japan and here in the United States. I think that that makes for a solid marketing plan. And again, a lot of that is just guesswork on my part. We're just making some assumptions here, but assuming that them not attending Gamescom indicates they don't have major games coming this year, I don't think that means it's going to be a dry year for news, excitement, speculation, and talk, but I do think that just in terms of things to play, look, if you really enjoyed Nintendo's first half of this year, first six months, then you're probably going to enjoy their second half, but if you're like me and waiting for those brand new exciting games, well, it's going to be a dry year. And I think that's what we learned, at least from this news. So let me know what you think about this. And let's move into something that might be a bit surprising, but I'm glad we're talking about it. And this is one of the reasons why I'm really glad we have this VG News segment, because it allows me to talk about the whole of gaming. And this would be something that normally wouldn't get attention at my channel, but I want to bring attention to it, because we're shouting out an upcoming Steam Early Access game on the 26th. It is called Manor Lords, and yes, April 26th, it's available on Steam Early Access. The game has 2.5 million wish lists right now, which is insane, because this game is made by a single developer, and that developer's girlfriend back in 2020 told them that she thought the game would only get maybe 7,000 wish lists on Steam, and instead 2.5 million with early access beginning next week. That is pretty insane, or April 26th. Now, what's really fascinating about this game and why we're talking about it is obviously it's a type of game I'm interested in. It is a medieval city builder. You get to be a lord. You build your city up. It's even got a mode where you can go as your lord and walk through your city, which is really cool. You can also combine that with tactical battles and stuff like that, expand your territory. It's sort of a cross between a real-time strategy game and city builder, which I find to just be really awesome. Maybe a bit of a tactical strategy aspect as well. And I just, I'm really excited about it. The trailers look really good. If this game holds up as well as the trailers do, man, this game's looking to me almost as good as a lot of the other RTS games and city builders out there that have much larger teams. So I think this is really exciting. This can end up being a million. So this developer is about to have their life absolutely changed. And it's through creating a game that many, many people want to play, including myself. In fact, I have gone ahead and added myself to that Steam wish list because, look, I, I've never actually wish listed a Steam game before. This is the first one I've done it for. Manor Lords, check it out. Let me know what you think. Really glad we get to cover a game like this on VG News. This is why this show exists. I have other interests, and this is one of those interests. All right, diving into more of this stuff, we got to go into, well, Moore's Law is Dead, or... Really, we're talking about PlayStation 5 Pro. That's right, folks. We're diving back into PlayStation 5 Pro because Sony did something that uh, I guess should have been expected, but maybe is a little strange because it only really happened due to how YouTube's copyright system works because all the articles with the information haven't gone down. We're talking about the fact that Sony ended up copywriting 
the Moore's Law is Dead video who originally leaked all the PlayStation 5 Pro specs. So what that has done is obviously confirmed those specs are legit and real. And yeah, while it was corroborated by IGN and it, you know, it seemed legit this entire time, there's no doubt now with Sony copyright claiming the video, it's very clear that this stuff is real. So what were some of those specs? Well, just to kind of go over here, there was going to be a high CPU frequency mode. So the CPU in the PlayStation 5 Pro was going to be the exact same as in the base PS5, but you were going to be able to increase it by 10% with this mode if you wanted to 3.85 gigahertz, which is pretty cool. But if you use that mode, it actually would lower the GPU performance by 1%. This is likely just due to the increase in heat and dissipation. They decided to downclock. The, C the GPU just a smidge, but that is GPU performance 1% decrease over the increased GPU performance, which was reported in his video to be 33.5 teraflops, which is a huge leap compared to the 10.28 teraflops of the PlayStation 5. But teraflops is a misleading metric in measuring this stuff, especially with a a AMD here too, because AMD's technology has evolved a lot over the years. So while that seems like a 3x jump over the original GPU, which would be massive, it's actually more akin to say 17 teraflops if you want to think of it as a traditional same architecture jump. Unfortunately, it's not the same architecture, or maybe fortunately, because using newer architecture is usually a better thing. AMD's architecture has had massive shifts in the GPU space. So the stuff being used in the PlayStation 5 Pro is using newer architecture than what's in the PS5, which means that the teraflops are not one-to-one. -one. In fact, Moore's Law is dead, you know, and basically said that the GPU would be 45% faster with rendering, which gives you that indication of how much better 45% that the GPU really is, not that 3x performance that the teraflop number might tell you. Gamers, we need to stop staring at teraflops and acting like that tells the whole story. It absolutely does not. Now, that being said, uh, there was some other stuff that ended up happening because, well, The Verge got access to, I think, the same documents that Moore's Law did and gave us some additional details. And those additional details are a little interesting anyways. Uh, it's nothing major, but just a few little specs. As an example, the memory is gonna be increasing speed from 448 gigabytes per second to 576.7 gigabytes per second, which is roughly a 28% increase. In the documents, it does say you might be able to get more than 28% uh, increase depending on the circumstances, but that is roughly the numbers that it shows. And again, these are development documents. Uh, more than that, because the system is more efficient, developers will also gain an additional 1.2 gigabytes of RAM, essentially system memory, increasing to 13.7 gigabytes available for developers versus the 12.5 originally there. And the documents really spend a whole lot of time just talking about ray tracing and how they really want people to take advantage of the ray tracing with this increased power and performance and all of that. Basically, Basically, the idea of this entire system existing is to take better advantage of ray tracing and to use Sony's internal resolution increasing system, their resolution bump. So I, I think that that's important just to consider that this is what Sony's really focused on is, hey, we have this upscaler to get higher resolutions, 4K as an example, and we really want ray tracing to be a thing. Also, the documents say that any games that are seeking approval after August should be approved for both PS5 Pro and PS5. So take that for what it is. I don't know what's going on. Uh, that's just what the internal documents reportedly say. And again, kind of BS that Sony could copyright videos, but again, it's only because of YouTube and how YouTube functions. They're not actually striking the channel as far as we're aware. They're not going after them. They're not attacking them and they can't take out all these editorials because of freedom of press. Freedom of press to me does extend to YouTube, but hey, good luck fighting Sony. It's really expensive. So hey, Moore's Law is Dead I think is just going to let it go, but it does prove that Moore's Law is Dead does have some legit sources. We've actually cited him in the past over Switch 2 related stuff, so it's important to know that while he doesn't get everything right, he clearly has some legit sources, and Sony basically just confirmed that. So I was actually sitting here editing uh, the VG News, and you know we went through all of our stories today, originally just four, but we need to add on a fifth bonus story here since the video hasn't gone out yet, because Nintendo has announced a brand new Indie World happening tomorrow. I got the details right here. It says tune in tomorrow, 4.17 at 7 a.m., Pacific time for roughly 20 minutes of announcements and updates on indie games heading to Nintendo Switch in 2024. So we will definitely be live streaming that event tomorrow. And look, the indie world happened. If you guys remember this rumor we had originally that 
The guy kind of backed off from Brazil. He put out there that we were supposed to get an Indie World last month and then a Nintendo Direct this month, and now he believed that we weren't going to get a Nintendo Direct anymore. And the latest update was there wasn't going to be a Direct this month, or at least he didn't think there would be. But now the Indie World's here. So what does that mean for a Nintendo Direct? Well, it could mean that potentially there's still a Nintendo Direct going to happen. Could be next week. We have gotten several Indie Worlds a week before a general Nintendo Direct. Or the Nintendo Direct might have got pushed and maybe everything got pushed back a month. And it's Indie World this month, Nintendo Direct in May, and then maybe a Switch 2 reveal in July. And I'm throwing that all out there because all of those events were tied together from an original rumor from Brazil, who's been a reliable insider. I find this just to be really fascinating. Again, this could mean nothing. It doesn't mean that there's a Direct happening this month or next month at all. But it does mean that we are getting an Indie World. That's really exciting. And you know what's really, really exciting about this? particular indie world you know what game has been getting raided all over the world hollow knight silk song you know what game doesn't have a release date but is supposed to be coming to nintendo switch and is an indie title hollow knight silk song for once folks i don't think we are over exaggerating to say that we should actually expect hollow knight silk song to use a release date information tomorrow Woo! man i like it feels so great to be like man that's not actually like an over exaggeration to be excited so that just makes me extra excited for this Indie World tomorrow because that's what, I, dude, Hollow Knight was amazing. I love the hell out of it. Beat it a long time ago. Really glad to dive back into this. I actually played Silk Song back in 2019 at E3. So, like, man, I'm, I'm just, we have an Indie World tomorrow. And this might indicate directs are coming. So, cool stuff. Cool, cool stuff. Doesn't mean the direct's going to necessarily, if it does happen, have a bunch of new stuff in it as we saw with Gamescom not happening. But still, there you go. Had to slip this one in there. Back to the end of the video. That being said, we got to dive into our last story because Atlas has an event going on next week. You guys know Atlas. We all love them. Shin Megami Tensei, Persona, and others. Uh, well, Atlas has gone ahead and announced a new live stream for their upcoming game, Metaphor Refantasio, on April 22nd at 6 p.m. Eastern. It's going to be a live stream event. We may or may not react to it. We'll see. But the game is due to release in 2024, and... Chances are we'll probably get a release date in this event. And it's a role-playing game developed by Studio Zero, which are the folks that basically handle all the Shin Megami Tensei games. Now, that being said, the game's concept is about exploring the themes of the ideal reality while overcoming anxiety. And it has an interesting setting as well, dealing with a medieval fantasy world that mimics the contemporary real world. The game has been in development for at least eight years with the original announcement dating back to 2016. We don't really know much else about the game as details have been pretty scarce. They haven't given us a lot of updates for it over the years, but hey, I guess that's what next week is for when we're gonna have a blowout. Just wanted to shout this game out because look, Atlas just makes good games and they deserve more attention than they typically get. I mean, they were just celebrating, what is it, uh, the, what is it, the Persona 3 Reload, do, selling a million in the first week across all platforms is the fastest selling Atlas game of all time. One, congratulations, that's really exciting, but also two, only a million? Man, Atlas games deserve way more sales than that. So I just want to make sure we're giving proper attention to that game. You guys are awesome. Even if we don't end up live streaming it, we'll obviously give you all the news updates right here on VG News the day after it happens. So thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.